What is up you guys? Welcome back to another one. If you're new to the channel, I am Gold Pony. That's me on the screen right there. Wanted to make a comparison video today between the 2020 Honda CRV versus the 2020 Toyota RAV4. I have reviewed both of those this year. And if you wanted to check both of those videos out individually, I will leave links to them at the very end of this video. But this is one of those classic comparisons that I always have to do every year. And so both are great SUVs. Let me start by saying that there's really no wrong pick here, but both are very different in their own way. And one may be better suited for you than the other. So in this particular video, I'm going to go over my top 10 key differences between the two, starting with number 10, working our way to number one, there will be a clear winner at the end. But having said that, that might not be your personal winner, because like I said, they are very different. You might be looking for one thing as opposed to the other. So without further ado, let's just go ahead and get started with number 10 on my list. And so for my number 10 comparison, the easiest comparison that you can make starting out is going to be the price. Starting price for the RAV4 LE starts at $25,950. CRV LX starts at $25,050. Those are both the bottom trim levels of each respective SUV. So the CRV is going to start at a price of $900 less than the RAV4. However, on the other end of the spectrum, a fully loaded RAV4, the RAV4 Limited starts at $35,880. And on on the other hand, the CRV Touring is going to start at $34,750, so again, roughly $900 less on both accounts when comparing equivalent trims at least. So, CRV is going to take the win here. One to nothing, CRV. Let's move on to number nine. Then for number nine on the list being reliability. And so I pulled a couple different resources for this one. Both are known really for great reliability, hence the reason they are so often compared. When it comes to Consumer Reports, Consumer Reports gives above average reliability for both the RAV4 and the CRV actually. So it is a tie ball game as far as Consumer Reports is concerned. So for the tie, we're going to check out JD Power here. JD Power actually gives the Toyota RAV4 four out of five as far as the reliability ranking. For for the CRV, however, that gets a 3.5 out of 5. So, therefore, since JD Power ranked the RAV4 a little higher for reliability, the RAV4 is going to win this particular comparison. But I did want to mention, along with that, when it comes to the warranties, both get three year 36,000 mile bumper to bumper, both get five year 60,000 mile powertrain. So, again, that's tied up. So, the winner here goes to the RAV4 one to one. Now moving on to my number eight being seat comfort. So I've tested both of them and both are plenty comfortable for long road trips. I will say that when it comes to rear legroom, CRV comes in at 40.4 inches, which is definitely a good bit. The RAV4 comes in at 37.8 inches. So let me give you a little comparison here for reference. I am an even six feet tall. I was able to fit comfortably in both. So either way, you're gonna be plenty fine, but the CRV does give you leather finishes, power front seats and heated front seats if you wanted them, whereas the RAV4 is going to give you heated and ventilated front seats, heated rear seats. CRV does give you slightly more rear seat room, so that takes it there. But then again, on the other hand, the RAV4 gives you slightly more comfort when it comes to ventilated front seats and heated rear seats as well. So since they both kind of win in their own respective rights there, I'm gonna have to call this particular one a tie and we're still tied up at one to one, making our way to number seven. And so for number seven on the list, we're going to compare cargo space. Cargo capacity behind that second row for the CRV comes in at 39.2 cubic feet. For the RAV4, 37.6 cubic feet. So CRV takes it there. Both do come with the 60 40 split, meaning the rear seats fold down for quite a bit of extra space. Bumping that cubic feetness, yes, I know it's not a word, up to 75.8 cubic feet for the CRV, 69.8 cubic feet for the RAV4. It's really a substantial difference difference there. And I did want to mention both do come with a spare tire under the cargo floor there with some space for storage. Really, it's not in floor storage because the spare tire is there, but there is some space in both situations there. But overall, the clear winner here is the CRV. And so therefore, CRV takes the lead at this point, two to one. Make your way to number six being acceleration, my favorite part, of course. With the RAV4, you have a 2.5 liter naturally aspirated inline four cylinder producing 203 horsepower, 184 pound feet of torque, zero to 60, approximately eight seconds flat for that one. Then on the other hand, Honda CRV gives you a 1.5 liter turbocharged inline four cylinder producing 190 horsepower, 179 pound feet of torque. Zero to 60 time there comes in at approximately 8.2 seconds. 
In the end, both SUVs, in my personal opinion, are somewhat underpowered. For example, you have the Hyundai Santa Fe, a little more power there, producing zero to 60 in 7.5 seconds. I'm not including that in this comparison though, of course. So winner here, of course, does go to the Toyota RAV4, tying us up once again at two to two. Then number five on the list is going to come down to fuel economy, a very important comparison for many consumers out there. Front wheel drive configuration for both, come in at 28 in the city, 35 highway for the RAV4, 28 city, 34 highway for the CRV. Then when it comes to the all wheel drive configurations for each of them, that comes in at 25 in the city, 33 highway for the RAV4, 27 city, 32 highway for the CRV. And so if you went with the RAV4, that is gonna give you more MPGs for the front wheel drive on the highway and the all wheel drive on the highway. If you went with the CRV, that is gonna give you more MPGs for the all wheel drive in the city. And usually turbocharged engines will do that for you. So depending upon your own situation, if you do a lot of city driving, maybe the Honda CRV is better for you. But in the end, total won this one two to one. So therefore, RAV4 is going to take this one, putting it at three to two, RAV4 is in the lead. Now make your way to number four on the list being interior quality. Although RAV4 has gotten much better over the years, it does still use considerably more hard plastics than the CRV. I think you guys will be able to see that in my comparison in each video that I did here. CRV does offer more soft touch materials. I do remember being very impressed with the light and dark contrast leather finishes in the CRV as well as the wood trim as well. So a lot of very high end finishes can be found in that CRV. So I think everybody will pretty much agree with me on this one. This is not subjective. CRV is going to clearly take the win here. Three to three, we are tied up once again. Then make your way to number three being safety. A very important comparison when you consider an SUV because more than likely you may have some kids in the back seat. When it comes to IIHS, as far as their top safety pick ratings, the RAV4 is a top safety pick plus, which is the very highest designation given by IIHS, by the way. When it comes to the CRV, that is a top safety pick. No plus. <laughs> so therefore, RAV4 wins when it comes to IIHS, but continuing with that safety, both are very safe SUVs, therefore. You can conclude that already. Front side, side curtain airbags will come with the CRV. The RAV4 also gives you a driver's knee airbag as well, one up there. Both have a ton of advanced safety features. Toyota comes with Toyota Safety Sense 2.0. CRV comes with Honda Sensing, that's their fancy names for their advanced safety feature suite for both brands there. Ultimately, the driver's knee airbag is a plus, but that IIHS score really gives us the winner here, which is RAV4, four to three, RAV4 in the lead once again. Number two on the list comes down to handling and ride quality, a very important one for long road trips, perhaps. Both offer a very nice ride, I will say that. Both can easily be very great daily drivers as well. Also, when it comes to the upper trim levels for both the RAV4 and the CRV, they will both offer drive mode selections as well to adjust things like the ride quality and the steering feel. But if you've driven both of them, and maybe you will drive both of them if you're considering them, there is a very clear winner here, let me tell you. Handling winner, hands down, comes down to the CRV. I believe I even said that in my video. It has an absolutely amazing steering feel for an SUV. And again, looking back over the video, I did conclude that ride quality, I did say was perfectly fine on both of them. Really didn't notice that much of a difference there between the two when it comes to ride quality. Some critics do say the CRV is a little bit smoother, but again, you're more than likely not going to notice a difference. I didn't notice a difference, and I've reviewed quite a bit of cars at this point, so I usually am able to tell a difference, but I really didn't tell the difference between those two. In the end, because the CRV has a substantially better steering feel, being that it's a weightier feel to it, better response when you turn the wheel, the clear winner here has to be the Honda CRV, which puts us out a four to four tie with one comparison left since there was a tie with the seat comfort comparison. So let's go ahead and make our way to number one. Number one, I have to do it. I have to compare the braking between the two because this is very important in case you drive this on a daily basis and you need to make a quick stop on your commute to work perhaps. You wanna know that you are going to be able to stop super fast so you don't hit the driver in front of you, of course. So I'm going to judge this one by the 60 to zero stopping distance in terms of feet. And so when it comes to those brake setups, the Toyota RAV4 gives you 12 inch ventilated front discs. In the back, 11.1 .1 inch ventilated rear discs. It comes in with a curb weight of 3,600 15 pounds, giving you a 60 to zero stopping distance of 126 feet. Then take a look at the Honda CRV. Those brake sizes come in 11.1 .1 inch ventilated front disc.
this 10.2 inch solid rear disc. As far as the curb weight goes, that comes in at 3,452 pounds, 60 to zero stopping distance, 116 feet, which is excellent for this segment. For comparison's sake, Mazda CX-5 comes in at 123 feet, as does the Ford Escape. So really the Honda CR-V is the best when it comes to that 60 to zero braking distance. And I know what some people might be thinking, but why does the RAV4 have bigger brakes, but it doesn't stop as quickly? And there's always many factors that play into that, whether it be how quickly the anti-lock brake system reacts, also take into account the weight of the actual vehicle, which is why I mentioned that in this comparison as well. But ultimately the facts are the facts and the Honda CRV does stop quicker than really any other SUV in its class. So therefore, Honda CRV takes the braking comparison here. And therefore, the clear winner in this comparison today is the Honda CRV. And again, before anybody says that I am partial to Honda, feel free to check out my Accord versus Camry comparison video if you wanted to, because I think you will find the results may be a bit different in that one. So I'm not partial to either brand. I am 100% objective and I wanna help you guys make the best possible decision here. So again, although the Honda CRV won my comparison, you may not be looking for some of the items that I put on this comparison. So maybe the Toyota RAV4 is better for you. It ultimately comes down to personal preference. They're both super solid picks. And I do hope this video indeed helped you guys. Let me know which one you would pick in the comments section below. And that is about it for this one. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen, and I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay safe and stay gold.